Let's look at an example two. Let's assume that y is implicitly defined by this equation right here. We want to find dy dx. So what rule do I need to use to find the derivative of this first piece right here? Anybody know? That's right, product rule. So first function is x to the fifth. The second function is cosine of y. So when I take the derivative of that, the derivative of x to the fifth is five x to the fourth. As you do the first function, you keep the second function, which is cosine of y. Then we got to multiply by the derivative of the second function. I'm sorry, add what you get when you multiply the derivative of the second function. What rule do I need to use to find the derivative of cosine of y? Any thoughts? Chain rule is correct. The outside function is the derivative of cosine, which is negative sine. You keep the inside, which is y. You multiply by the derivative of the inside. So the derivative of y is dy dx. That's the derivative of the second function. And you keep the first function x to the fifth. Okay. That's just the left hand side. So now we got to um, calculate the derivative of the right hand side. The derivative of 5x is just 5. The derivative of 2 is 0. So I'm going to rewrite this to make life make it look a little prettier. So this would be 5x to the fourth cosine of y minus x to the fifth sine of y times dy dx equal to five. I'm trying to solve for dy dx now. So I'm going to keep that guy on the left. I'm going to move everything else to the right. So this is going to become negative x to the fifth sine of y times dy dx equal to five minus five x to the fourth cosine of y. Oh, sorry, I didn't even see the, I, I forgot about the plus y. Thank you. Thank you, Terry. I just somehow didn't see it. The, the plus y makes it way better. So um, let me just delete this part here for now. <clears throat> Thank you. So when I, when I take the derivative of y, which is right here, which I just skipped, what's the derivative of y? The derivative of y is dy dx. I can't just say what it is explicitly because my function was implicitly defined. So anytime I see a y and I take the derivative, I just call it dy dx. So this is a dy dx here like this. That makes sense. So now we want to solve for dy dx. So what we do is we keep anything involving dy dx on the left side we move everything that doesn't involve dy dx over to the right side. So this becomes, if you don't mind, I'm gonna put the dy dx in front minus x to the fifth sine of y times dy dx. That's equal to five minus five x to the fourth cosine of y. I hope it doesn't bother you that I just interchange these two just because I like the subtraction instead of just negative plus something positive. So now that I have all the dy dx's on the left hand side, I'm going to factor. So 
So then this becomes dy dx on the outside, one minus x to the fifth sine of y equal to five minus five x to the fourth cosine of y. <clears throat> Finally, to um, get the dy dx by itself, I divide. So when I divide, I'm gonna get dy dx is equal to five minus five x to the fourth cosine of y all divided by one minus x to the fifth sine of y. And that's gonna be my derivative. As I said earlier, a lot of times when you take the derivative of a implicitly defined function, your, um, your answer is going to be involving both x's and y's. A student asked, how did I get this one here? Um, you can almost pretend that there's like, it's like one times dy dx. So then when I pull out the dy dx to the left, it's like the one remains there. Does that make sense? It's kind of like how when you have um, x minus x squared and you pull out an x, then there's a one minus x like that. It's the same idea. Okay. 